believe, I believe that one of the greatest assets of a person who calls himself a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, is this ability to discern the voice and the leading of the Lord. Man, if you can learn, if you can hear clearly and you can walk in those things that you heard, I'm telling you that, that the sky is the limit. And if that's the case, then, then we need some sort of filter in our life that can distinguish, was that God or was that pizza from last night? Can, it, can I get an amen? Like, was that the burrito talking to me? Or was that the Spirit of God? I, I just don't know. And, and, and has anyone ever wondered, like, God, God, where are you in this situation? I, I just, I need some clarity. I, my hand's in the air. Anybody? Raise your hand. And those in watch online comment, yes, help me, Lord. You know, like, God, where, where, I need some clarity right here. Uh, I know you've got a purpose for me, but, but I'm really trying to figure the clarity side of that out. And I'm not talking about decisions like, do we get a dog or a cat? By the way, it is always God's will to get a dog. <laughs> Thus saith the how, okay? Or, or I'm not talking about, about well, maybe, well, maybe it is. You know, should we have kids now? Should we wait? Should we have two kids? Should we have five kids? Should we have ten kids? Should we, um, some of you are like, mm, 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 mm. I've just got to, mm, 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 right? No, that's a no. Or, or maybe it's, it's something as important as this as well, a career choice. Maybe you're, you're joining the, the workforce out of college. Lord, I need a job. Is this the right job? I've got this offer. What, what do I do? Or maybe you are, you've been in the workplace for 25 years or 20 years, and you see that this is now a new career change. How many of you really need some, some guidance there? I'm getting into a different industry. I don't know what this looks like. And, and, and if you don't know that you know, that you know, that you know that you've heard from God, without that knowing, you're going to be walking around spiritually in the dark trying to justify your feelings and your opinions. It's very dangerous. I'm a person that is a person of routine. I, I am a routine. If I get out of my routine, I, you might as well park me at the, at the corner. I don't know what I'm doing. Like well, the other day, I, I went with Sandra. I said, let's ride to work together. She said, okay. So, um, but we, didn't, we normally don't. That's where it should have stopped, right there. <laughs> we got down the road and like, hey, where's my phone? Well, it's where you always put it, on the counter. Uh, you know, it was, and the whole day just kind of unraveled after that. I'm a person of routine. On Sunday mornings, I get here really early. Like when you were, when you were praying to, you know, <laughs> bedtime Baptist with Pastor Sheets, your pastor's praying for you here <laughs> in this auditorium. But, but, but really, I, I have this routine, and I, and I turn out the lights, I close the doors, and I always do this because it's pitch black in my bedroom. And I know if I gotta, I've got to walk to that little bump out and hit those lights so I can get my backpack, I got, I'm a person of routine. But without, without that, I'm walking around in the dark. And this is what many of us look like with our spiritual lives. I'm in the right room. I just got to get to my keys. I'm, I'm in the right house, thank God, or the police would be called. But, but, but I don't know exactly, and I'm, I'm, kicking, I'm kicking the bed. I'm, I'm stumping my toe on the nightstand. And all the while, God's saying, I want to turn the light on for you. It's very clear where you need to be walking, and so we don't have to do this. Now, you may not have that God's given me vision for 10 years, and I know exactly what to do over every day for the next 10 years, but watch what the Spirit of God will do. The Spirit of God will give you enough light on your next step that you'll make an accurate step. Even when things get hard, you know I knew where I stepped because that's where he showed me. Now, I, I, this is going to encourage you because the number one, the number one prayer request that I get is direction, God's will. Number two is finances. Number one, I just, I, I just need to know that I know that I know. This is going to encourage you because I'm going to start off with theological, and then we're going to unpack it and get super practical, okay? So if you're a note taker, I highly recommend that you write this down. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Why? Because some of them are not holy. <laughs> Don't believe every spirit, but what? But test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So wait a minute. So not every voice and every spirit is of God. That's right. So the Bible, it, it, it charges us to test them. Well, what test? Well, today I want to give you the tests. It's, it's, it's in the order of priority, importance, 
But there are some tests that you can filter through that every decision, is this God or not? This is going to save some marriages. I believe what I'm going to share right now is going to save some money. It's going to save your children. Then I'm, going to give, I'm going to give you some tests that are biblical tests to filter this. And, and, and it's, it's, or you may get a word. I, there's a lot of words going around right now, prophetic words. Have you all noticed that? It's like, like YouTube has been hijacked by prophetic words lately. You know, have you seen this word? Have you heard this word? Well, they, they are probably well-meaning people, but I have to test that word. Because just, that, just because they put, thus saith the Lord at the end of it, doesn't mean that God actually said it. And this may be new to you, but this is not new to me. I've been doing this for decades. And so I'll hear a word and I go, that doesn't line up. Or that doesn't come, that's not consistent with what's in my heart. And I'm like, I'm going to file 13 that word. And I would really want to help you guys and, and, and file some words that are, are distracting your life right now. Proverbs 4.12, there is a way that seems right. It seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. You better know, you better know the way that seems right to you is from the Lord. Because if it's not, it's not, the Bible says it's not going to end well. It will end in death. Now, here's the practical side of God's will. Are you ready? Four questions to ask yourself. And these were shared with me decades ago. I've lived by them, and they are absolutely accurate every single, every single time. And when I overrode them, it came back to bite me. I'm not saying I got it right all the time, because when I went around the biblical principles, I got in the flesh, and I got into trouble, and I, don't want, you, I want to save you some tears today. All right, first one, please, this is, these questions are in the order of priority as well. Number one, write down, does it agree with God's word? Well, someone gave me a word. Well, does that word agree with God's word? I believe I heard a voice. Pastor Al, do you believe in that? Well, that there's a precedent set for that. And God can speak that way. He's God. But does that voice line up with his word, which is the Bible? This isn't the last question to ask yourself. This isn't the third question to ask yourself. This is, not the, this is the top of the list because if it does not line up with the word of God, then you don't even have to go through the other filters. You can just say, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bless your heart. We say that in the South like you're an idiot. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Bless your heart. That's not of God, right? Why? Because that is contrary to the word of God. And my life has to be lined up with God's word. Now, now God's leading is always consistent with the Bible. There, it, write this statement down. There is no use in asking for a word when we're not cooperating with the word. But, but matter of fact, if someone gives you a prophetic word, it's not for celebration, it's for preparation. Okay? I, 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 some, I, people over the years have given me words and I, th I thank them, but you know what? There are some that they, they land on my heart and I go, yeah, that's right. That's, God's preparing me. I'm, 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 he's preparing my heart for what's coming. I, I got that, right? I was, I was, um, I was at a, a conference. Sandra and I went to a conference in Boston, and it was, it was a, a, a great man of God. But really, it was, there was one, there was a general in the faith. At the end, he said, I'd, lo I'd love to come up and pray. And it, was, it stopped at, I think, 99 people. There was no more than 99 people in the room. I'd, I'd love to just, I want to pray for you. I just want to encourage you. And I thought, man, I'd love to have that pastor uh, who, who has, check it out, check it out, 50 years in ministry. Yeah, I'd say he's doing all right, right? His dad had that, that much. And now, I mean, he's just an amazing minister. And I highly respect him because he's a man of God's word. He, he, he was praying down the line, and, and he, gets to, he gets to Sandra. And there was a specific word. Now, what was funny is the same thing that Sandra and I were traveling to Boston it was, it, she said, I'm needing some clarity on this, and I want some help from God on this. And when he prayed, he just, he didn't do it for everybody, but he prayed for it. And it was a specific word about the revelation that, I mean, it was so, it was so specific. And I'm doing this, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. Like, Sandra's right here. I'm like, oh, I'm, about, I'm getting ready for mine. Come on. You know, he got to me. This is what he said. Bless, bless, bless. You're blessed, blessed, blessed. All right. And he skips over me. I'm like, what? Where, what is that? You know? But check this out. That encourages me. Because, because in other words, keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep doing what you're doing. God, keep doing what you're doing. He gave a word to comfort her, encourage her, 
edification, exhortation, and comfort. That's what a word is for. He gave a word to comfort and steady her. He gave a word to me to keep on going where you're going. But you know what? Both of those words lined up with the word of God. I am blessed. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. So I just said, well, I'm blessed. So the guys around me that knew me, they're like, you're blessed, blessed, blessed. I'm like, just call me blessed. All right? So check it out. Check it, check it out. The, 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 Jesus said in, in Luke 21, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Matthew chapter 12, verse, verses 1, 1 through 3. At the time, I hope this is encouraging you. This is a fail, it's a, a fail proof. At the time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees, the religious rulers, saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful. They're harvesting. They're working on the Sabbath. And and Jesus, Jesus answered this. He said, Haven't you, haven't you read? What's he talking about? He pointed them back to the Holy Scriptures. Jesus did not say, this is what I believe. This is what I feel. This is my opinion. Jesus, the Son of God, the Word made flesh, said, haven't you read what David, King David, did when he and his companions were hungry? So in other words, there is a precedent set in the Word of God. So you, you, this has already been walked out. This has already been shown We've got revelation on this. What you're trying to give me is a word. They were trying to give Jesus a word. And Jesus said, no, no, let me point you back to the word. All right. Jesus is, is he didn't give his opinion. He gave God's, God's thoughts on that. I can't say this enough. Please receive this. And this is as a warning even, okay? The voice of God that you're hearing will never contradict the word of God that you're reading. Never. Never. Well, pastor, what do I do if if my situation doesn't have an actual chapter and verse? Like my job, this career. Okay, well, let me, it's in the Bible. It's in 2 Occupations chapter 3, verse 10. No, don't go looking for that. That's not, I just made that up. But wouldn't that be nice if we would go to a chapter and verse and it would say, thou must give a a three-week resignation and take the job that payeth thee 700K. Yea, 700K, I say. (laughs) Come on now. With a signing bonus that will be proof that it is thy will to walk in that which I have prepared for you. With stock options because I loveth thee. I mean, you know... (laughs) We just go, we all want that. I want that. But we may not have that, so what do I do? All right, you ready? Second test, write it down. This this decision draw me closer to Jesus. What does God's word have to say about it? Well, it's it doesn't con- it's not contrary to what I'm, I'm, I'm direction I'm going. All right, well, does it draw me closer to Jesus? In other words, if I go ahead with this decision, go ahead in that direction, will it produce Christ-like qualities in my life? James chapter 3, verse 17, but the wisdom that comes from heaven. In other words, this is what God looks like. This is the attributes of God. When Jesus walked the earth, this is what he manifested, his conversations, his decisions, his interactions with people. It is what? First of all, it's pure. Is it peace-loving? Yeah. It's considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. It's impartial and sincere. That just described everything. Does it draw me closer to Jesus? What was Jesus? Jesus was pure. There was no fault. He was the sinless, spotless lamb of God. He was peace loving, right? He was considerate. He was submissive to his father's will. He, he was full of mercy. That's why he could go minister to, 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 to the, the outcasts of the day and the religious rulers. Why? Because he was full of mercy. He was full of good fruit. You, walk, you walked and followed Jesus, all you saw was good fruit around him. He was impartial. He, he loved the priest and he loved the poverty. He loved the thief. He loved the prostitute. He loved the politician. And he loved, come on, he was impartial. He loved everybody. And, and he was sincere. In other words, it wasn't just for his, his Instagram he really meant it. All right, well, pastor, I'm praying about taking this job. And he pays a lot more, pastor. He pays a lot more. Well, I want you to know that a, 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 someone that's giving you advice, they don't tell you what to do. They were probably a good, a good mentor will ask you questions in reverse. 
they'll say something like this. Well, does the schedule of that new job, does it allow you to get closer to Jesus or pull you away from people of God, Jesus, church life? I understand you want more money. Guess what? They print it every day. I knew I wouldn't get any amens for that. You're still on the, and the 700K payeth thee, Lord. Right? How about this one? Should I continue dating this person in this relationship? Okay, here's my question. Does that person, can help me, draw you closer to Jesus? Or do they, being around them, do they pull you away from Jesus? Pastor, he, he or she, they're, they're, they, he's a good provider. She's a sweet gal. She's very honoring. He's very kind. They don't go to church. They love God. They just don't like Christians. Hey, hey, I'm trying, I'm, 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 saving, I'm saving your life. Does it, if you said yes to that person at the altar, are you closer to Jesus? Or are you further away? All right? Ha, 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 look, pastor, I've got a, a big expenditure, expenditure coming. Should I make this purchase? You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a big purchase. Hey, pray about it. But that expense... Does that, can I, be, can I be real with you today? If I make this expenditure, am I not able to tithe? Let's, oh, let me throw you in the deep water. Can I go in the deep water today? You want deep teaching? Does that, does that, does that come off on your margin? Like, I can't say yes to generosity if I do that. Well, guess what? There you, there's your decision. That, that decision drew me away from God and not his character. His character is always, to, watch, it's always to be generous. Sandra and I put this into practice, not, not when we started making a certain amount. We put this into practice when we said, I do. Yes. When, we, when we were broke as a joke. I've never been poor. I never, poor is the state of your mind. I've been broke. Broke is the state of your pocketbook. <laughs> but, but even in our poverty, we said, we cannot make this expen expenditure. Why? Because this would, with, I, I have to be under God's covering. I have to be un, under God's blessing. And the way that I do that, one, one way is to, is to tithe. All right? All young couples, let me encourage you, just do it now. Just obey God now. All right? Well, I, I, just, I just don't know. Wh which college, here's a big one, which college do I go to? I've got, a, I've got some scholarships over here. I've got some scholarships over here. Or, or I, I have neither. Okay. If you go to that college, Will that draw you closer to Jesus? I'm helping some people today. Will that draw you closer? Young person, listen, I love you. Uh, will it, do you see yourself getting closer to Jesus or do you see yourself going around a group of people that are waiting for you and you know that group of people and I don't have to tell you who it, who it is because the Holy Spirit's already telling you nothing good can happen from that and you know that. Well, this other college may be more expensive. How about you just obey God and let God meet that need? Okay. So, so I've, I've been in ministry for decades, and Sandra and I can literally see it coming a mile away, a mile away, and it has nothing to do because I'm in ministry. You get old enough and walk with God long enough, and you can see things coming a mile away in someone's life. If they make that decision, they go for that, they're not going to stick around God or God's people, all right? Again, is this decision drawing you closer to Jesus? Or further away from Jesus. All right, here's the third one. Very important. So if the answer is yes, but, okay, here's the, here's the next filter. Does your spiritual authority agree? Now, this is where the people hit the brakes. Because of abuse and misuse, mostly abuse, in the area of spiritual authority. We don't like that because we don't like to submit. I'm American. Hey, you can't tell me what to do. Okay, well, there is a kingdom bigger than America. It's called the kingdom of God. Yeah. I, got, I got freedom of speech right now. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, well, you know what? You do not have freedom of speech in the kingdom of God because the Bible says that your words are life or death. Yeah. Okay? Well, I can, I can post it. Yeah, be careful with posting. It's the same thing as speaking. Yeah. Right? So, oh, Lord, I'm so, I'm so, Lord, help me. I'm going off my notes. I'm not talking about insecure leaders trying to control your life. That's a cult. That's a cult. That's cultic. There, there was a movement back in the 70s. It was called, it was called the shepherding movement. You couldn't even buy a car without talking to your pastor. I'm like, buy, get the leather package. I don't care. Can you afford it? 
If you're in debt up to your eyeballs, don't get it. Drive a beater. I don't care. I, don't call me asking me, should I buy this house? I, if it's got a pool, ask me go over. I'll swim in that pool. I don't care. You know, white socks, blacks, I don't care. I'm not talking about controlling, manipulative, spiritual people. I'm talking about a true, a true spiritual mentor that all they want to do is see you win. Obey God. Walk with the Lord. Walk in purity. Walk in freedom. Like, that's, that's what we want for your life. Right? But, but I'm telling you right now, I believe that I am walking under the umbrella of an unmerited favor and blessing because Sandra and I are big on spiritual authority. I, I have overseers in my life. I have men that have gone further than, than I, probably I'll ever go. And, and I ask them hard questions. I want you to speak to me. This is what I'm seeing. Am I right? Am I off? What am, I, am, I, am I thinking they're on the right path? Guys, I just, I'm, I feel safe in the multitude of counselors. Godly counselors. Not just opinions, but they always, always they will point me back to God's word. And I, I, I love that. I, we have, we have if, if you need that around here, that's our, our pastoral staff. I'll tell you who else it is. It's our, our board of trustees. They are gifted men that with, with, the, with the giftings in the area of finances. They see things that others may not see. What is that? That's a, that, that, that's a spiritual authority. Hey, I, can you help me with this decision? They're not telling you what to do. They're just going to give you a 10,000-foot view. Am I helping you today? Right? Proverbs 12, 15. The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. Can I just tell you that wisdom listens Stupidity talks. Listen. There's an, old, there's an old saying I used to say. The word wait, here's what it stands for. Why am I talking? Why am I talking? We just need to wait sometimes. What, what, what are you waiting on? I'm waiting to listen. Why? Because, because if I get ahead, if you're talking, you're not learning. Proverbs 19, 20. I love this. Listen to my advice and accept. It's one thing to listen. It's another thing to accept. Embrace. Accept the instruction. And in the end, you will be wise. But many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. People today, just like that verse says, have many plans. And they do all the talking and not enough listening. And instead of seeking counsel from their spiritual elders... What they do is they find their friends who will tell them what they already want to hear. That's not listening. That's not wisdom. You're looking for a buddy system. And God's trying to save your life by putting some guardrails in people that want to help you win in your life. I thank God for that. I have that. I want you to have that too. That's available for you today. You know, I, I, let me give you examples of spiritual authority. Children, that is your parents. Moms and dads, I'm trying to help y'all today. If you're a child, what, what is a child? Okay, it's what age? If you're still on their payroll, you a child. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my, my, da my daughter's off at college and, and she's thriving, doing great there. And she said, I just missed my independence when she had to come home. She said, I missed my independence. I'm like, independence? Last time I checked, we're still cutting checks. <laughs> I understand what she's saying, though. Let me tell you something beautiful about a parent-child relationship. It is of God. It is breathed of God, inspired by God. And children, listen, if you're watching online, young people, teenagers, mom and dad just want to see you win. I know, I know it feels like, oh, they're just on me. They won't leave it alone. They just, you know what? We see something in you that's amazing. They do. They're not hounding you. They say, the potential. All I, I look at you and all I see is potential. Let me tell you what not to do because I already did it. Let me tell you where it will take you because I've already gone down that road. Why are they doing that? That's the thing. It's beautiful. It's, it's that parent-child relationship, but it is of God. I, I, I just, I believe that some people are going to get free today. Kids are going to say, you know what? I'm going to listen to that. The older I got, the smarter my dad got. I think Mark Twain said that. You know, here's another one is Highland Church. If Highland Church is your home, it would be, it would be our staff. It would be, 
even our, our small group leaders, can I go there and say, your small group leader loves God. All they want to do is see you win. That's, we just want to see you thrive in the things of God. It's possible. All right? Asking for advice from another baby Christian is like asking financial advice from a broke dude who lives in a creeper van in a Walmart parking lot. I need someone to tweet that right now. Should I go get this $800 car note? You go ask your broke uncle. Yeah, man, that's a good deal. I like that percentage rate. What? Come on, man. Think about it. If you have a good and healthy, secure spiritual authority in life, they're going to love you even when you get it wrong. <laughs> they just will. They're going to pick you up and encourage you, and they're not going to tell you, I told you so. Uh, they're going to tell them, no, you're not. We're not going to say that, I told you so. We're going to say, well, let's just take another lap around this mountain, and I'll walk with you. You may think I'm crazy, but we live in a blessing, an umbrella of blessing and favor. Because submission is not easy, but it's worth it. Save your life. Does it agree with God's word? Does it draw me closer to Jesus? Does my spiritual authority agree? And here's the last one. Do I sense God's peace? Because even if all the other tests, you're like, it's biblical. And yes, it does draw me closer to Jesus. And, and the people around me see this as it's, it, it looks good. But if you don't have that no-so peace, wait. If you don't have that peace that passes all understanding. How can it pass all understanding? Because understanding is right here. Peace is here. The best way that it's ever been described to me was in Bible school. When you don't have peace, it's like taking a shower with your socks on. Some ain't right about it. And you know that. The reason you're laughing, you're like, yes. Every time I've overridden that peace, I got in the shower with my socks on. Every time I overrode it, it came back to bite me. But God is so gracious and so full of mercy. He's the God of the second chance. And he's the God of the third chance. The God of the tenth chance. And he's a loving, merciful father. So if maybe you're thinking, man, a, a, a shower. I've been taking tub baths with my clothes on. It's okay. God's not mad at you. He just wants to help you with his word. He just wants to help you with his people. And he, you can do that by just saying, God, I'm sorry. We talked about it last week. Repent. I'm changing my mind. I see that there's a better way. It's toward Jesus. And now I'm walking in my behavior. My life is pointing a different direction now. This is the last test for a reason. What you don't say is this. Well, I've really got peace about this. Let me go to God's word to find a scripture that will prove it. Mm, witchcraft. Watch out. Because you are manipulating Holy Scriptures. Because you can make the Bible say whatever you want it to say. No, no, no. You start with God's Word. You don't finish with, well, let me see if I can make it fit. We do not make God's Word fit our lives. We make our lives fit to God's Word. Right? You don't say, you, you, or if a spiritual authority in your life says, man, you're going the wrong direction. You don't say, well, I've got a piece about it, so I'm going to do it anyway. It's not right. It's not, it's not God's order. Notice, the test to discern God's will does not start with you. Let me say that again. The test to discern the will of God does not begin with your desires or my desires. Here's the correct order. God's word. Jesus, spiritual authorities advice, then lastly, you. Because we live in a world that's backwards today. The world and the culture that we're living in says this, how do I, number one, feel about it? Number two, I'll find some friends to tell me what I want to hear. Number three, Jesus just wants me happy. Number four, I'll find scriptures to twist to make sure it says what I need it to say in this situation. Can't do that. We are a God first church. We are a God first people. Come on. We're submitted and we're glad about it. There's safety and submission to Him. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is the author, is not the author of what? Confusion, 
but of peace. Do you sense God's peace? Do you sense God's peace? If what you think the Lord is speaking to you passes the previous three, that you just don't have peace about it, just wait. Because watch, God's no, it's not always a no, it may be a not now. Maybe it is the timing of God. I've, I've done the right thing at the wrong time, and I still missed God's best. Ah, uh, I don't want that for you. Please learn from this, Pastor. <laughs> my mistakes, not my trophies. After your decision passes all of them, peace is the icing on the cake. Let me ask you a question, just in that attitude of prayer right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Where is your peace level at? Hmm. Where is your peace level? And you know what I'm talking about. Where's your peace level at? Let me give you two examples. Peace level. What does that mean? I, Pastor, I don't know to send my kids back to school or not. Well, God's word is it draw me closer to Jesus. People that are mentors in my life, spiritual mentors. Okay, we'll follow up your peace. Here's the thing. Don't judge someone else's peace. Oh, I need to say that again. Leave it alone. I can't believe. No, 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 no. Same God, different person. Different family dynamic. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. That's not for us to say. All right. Pastor, I just don't know about this job. It is more money. They print it every day, sir, ma'am. Follow after peace. Because truly, you're like, well, it's more money. It doesn't pull me away from or draw me to. It's just really the same thing. Just be careful. Just follow after peace. I'm so thankful. But God's words never led us astray. His spirits never led us wrong. I'm just going to sit here just for a minute. I think we need to get better at this as, as a church. I think we need to get better at this as a big C church. What are we better at what? Sitting and being still. Because you haven't been all week. If we can't do this at church, where can we do it? Peace, God. Peace like a river. Still waters, green pastures, your peace. For all the big decisions that people are making right now, God, I pray that it would be so clear. Not that they see the good opportunity, but they see you, God, in it. Thank you that peace is ours through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for your blessing upon the decisions that we make. Let them be God-honoring. Mm. God-honoring this week. May the way that we parent, the way that we love our neighbor, let us walk in peace. Let us speak words of peace. When people see Christians, may they see peace-loving. Blessed are the peacemakers. Lord, forgive us for trying to keep peace when we should have been making it. I love you, God. I thank you for the greatest church on the planet. I'm so honored to be with them today. I love the local church. I hope for the world. I believe that this afternoon, some of you are just going to walk in peace out of this place. Like, I feel like a million pounds have been lifted off of my life. Don't be anxious about those decisions. If you are, wait. That's not peace. Cast your care over on the Lord because He cares for you. And in that, Highlands Church, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May God establish you. And may God give you His, His peace. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Can we just thank God for what he's done today? I tell you, God's doing some stuff. Come on.